Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to Depression Quest. We ended up last time answering Attic because he needed someone to talk to about something. And I, I love helping people so, you know, if someone needs help I, I will be there, I will do my best. You're feeling like you've hit a brick wall with your tasks, so why not take a break and help out a friend? Hey, what's up? Oh, good. You're there. Um, I just found out I got cheated on. I don't know what to do. Oh no! That's horrible! The two of you talk for a long time, and you lend a shoulder to your friend. You give him space to rant, to cry, and most importantly, to be able to voice his inner turmoil. You give him your full attention, and talk him through what his options are for what he does next. You keep him from doing something rash, and the two of you decide it's best for him to sleep on it before doing anything. Exhausted, he departs for bed, and thanks you for being there to talk with him. As you close the IM window, you feel horribly sorry for your friend, but happy that you were able to help. It serves as a tangible reminder to you that you are capable of being useful to someone instead of solely being a mess that needs everyone else's help. You boot up your work project and find that you're suddenly able to get some solid progress done on it that night. Let's see... I am still... the same from last time. I have been regressed back into my darker state. But... That's a good thing. That it didn't. And then, slowly improving. It's a Sunday, Saturday afternoon. You're in deep thought on the way home from therapy. However, you notice this time that you're not in the same negative feedback loops you usually get trapped in when being this introspective. You realize that although you still have your bad days, your lows aren't quite as low as they used to be. Your antidepressants bottle rolls across your dashboard as you take a left turn. You've been on the medication for quite a while now after a period of trying a di few different kinds. Though you still have minor side effects, they've overall become an unnoticed part of your life. You feel as if your life has generally changed for the better recently, and you begin to wonder if you need them anymore. You don't feel as much despair or hopelessness and you hate yourself a lot less these days. Maybe it's time to stop taking these, you think. I seem to not really need them anymore. What do you do? Continue taking your medication or go off meds? I am still the same. That's good. When you, f when you feel like you're doing fine with medication, Um, it's because of the medication most of the time so once you go off the meds you will slowly go back towards what you were before before you started therapy before you started um, taking these medications that that you you're just not functioning well anymore you don't function correctly in, in life when you take out when you go off the meds without actually consulting with your, your therapist or psychiatrist and and there are consequences well if you do that without telling your psychiatrist because it, it just because you feel like you're doing well but but more importantly it, it's it's what's helping you do well I will continue taking my medication you have the realization that you can't be sure if it's a general life change that's making you feel better or if it's just a sign that the medication is working. You decide against this continuing your meds. It's not really a lesson you'd like to learn the hard way and the side effects of this particular kind are negligible. The next time you see Dr. Melville, you tell her about this. She informs you that there, this is a common train of thought that people have who have who begun using medication to help them manage their depression experience and that you've managed to dodge a bullet because it generally ends poorly. You also ask, she also asks you to talk to her first before taking, making any decisions about your medication in the future. Uh, see? The uh, second paragraph, that is pretty much what, what I meant. And I am still doing, doing good. 
there's no negative um i haven't gotten worse so that's that's good i haven't gotten better yet but you know i'm not going backwards it's yet another sleepless thursday night you're at alex's apartment wide awake and in bed as she's sleeping peacefully beside you she fell asleep hours ago and you've been laying there here unable to shut your brain up long enough to fall asleep You've added the feelings of insecurity about your relationship to the rest of the noise in your head keeping you up tonight. It was kind of a tense night between the two of you. You arrived after a stressful day at work and as you made dinner together you barely said a word. You were stuck in your own head and had a hard time really being present with her as your thoughts turned to all of the ways you feel like you're deficient at being a good person and beating yourself up mentally for each one. She told you she could tell you were in one of your moods and said that she wouldn't push you, but missed talking to you as the two of you sat on the couch together. You wanted to tell her how much you love her, but you couldn't make the words come out right and ended up sounding defensive instead. As you lay there next to her now, you trace your fingers across her arm just lightly enough to not wake her. You still haven't explained your depression to her, or how you've started seeing a therapist, or that you've been taking medication, and it's starting to feel more and more like a secret you're keeping instead of something she simply doesn't know about you yet. It's becoming more and more apparent that it's impacting your relationship with her and you feel guilty about this. However, you're also terrified that if she knew exactly how fucked up you are that she would leave you. You're already worried that she's only with you because she doesn't realize how terrible of a person you are yet. And you're afraid that this would be the final thing to expose you. She stirs in her sleep and squints as she opens her eyes. With the confusion that comes with waking up, she asks you if you're awake and then if everything's okay. I am still the same. Open up to her with ease. Uh, nope. Tell her about your situation. Or tell her it's nothing and that she should go back to sleep. She is my girlfriend. She pretty much understands part of it but doesn't fully understand it. So I think it's good to just let her in onto the situation. You feel like a jerk for accidentally waking her up, but you're afraid if you put this off any longer that you won't find the strength to tell her everything later. No, actually, everything isn't okay. Can I tell you something? Something important? Alex sits up, rubbing the sleep out of her eyes. For the rest of the night, you lay side by side, holding hands as you tell her everything. You tell her how it's more than just feeling sad sometimes, how you feel trapped by your own mind sometimes, how sometimes you feel nothing at all how you can't shake it off. You tell her how you started going to therapy, how you feel embarrassed about it, and how it's working out for you. She listens the entire time, occasionally asking questions about how this or that works or asking you to explain something further. She squeezes your hand and tells you she understands, and that she's sad you didn't tell her sooner. After laying silent for a, while, for a moment, the weight of what you did hits you. You desperately want her to say something, to tell you how she's feeling about all of this, but you're too afraid of what the answer would be to ask. You start convincing yourself that now that she knows everything, she's going to leave. There's no way someone could deal with how you really are. So how can I help? What do you need me to do? She asks. You think for a second, and the answer you come up with fills you with despair. I honestly don't know. I wish I knew how to fix this, but I don't know that you can do anything. I think it's something I just have to live with. She looks at you with sad eyes before kissing you on the forehead. Then, I'll live with it with you. I don't know how you could possibly love me. She rolls over and wraps her arms around your neck, setting, settling her, net, her head on top of yours. You don't need to, just know that I do. Oh, I said that. I don't know how you could possibly love me. You are doing well, you may still have your bad ways, but you now have effective ways to deal with them and you don't get nearly as low as you used to, or for as long. You still visit your therapist and even she has remarked on how much more alive you seem lately. You are taking medication regularly and are pleased at how well it seems to be working. I am doing awesome now. I am doing great. I am doing so well. I'm so glad I told my girlfriend that she she accepted it and you know shows love and support. That that's what 
people need with depression is is support. When you don't have support and you don't have you don't have someone to talk to or anyone to to really put this weight on, you are trapped within yourself. You are trapped within your mind, and it's terrible. It's super terrible. You you just can't think of anything. You think of everything. You think of nothing. You think of one thing only. It, it's you're trapped within yourself, and it's a nightmare. It's a Friday night, and you are laying across your bed, feeling pathetic. As you are leaving work tonight, a group of coworkers asked if you wanted to join them for drinks. Feeling antisocial and put on the spot, you declined. You have, a, you have a habit of doing this. You're often so convinced that you are weird and terrible, and that any invitation to hang out will end in disappointment for those inviting you. You never feel like you know how to act in group outings, and you feel like a total creep since it seems to come so naturally to anyone who isn't you. You find yourself petrified or breaking some unknown social rule that you don't often go out. Um, I get that sometimes. Just the、uh, the feeling of not really understanding what I should really be talking about. Cause、uh, not a lot of people have the same interests as me, so so sometimes it's a little difficult for me to really, I guess, express myself when when our interests are kind of opposite at times. So sometimes I am pretty quiet.、Uh, it happens. I I I I see it in myself, but I'm I'm actually slowly working towards out of that to to just kind of. Understand what what、um, interests that they are,、um, that they have, and you know, just to really get into that groove of being social. Now, however, you find yourself alone at home. Your brain has begun telling you how pathetic and sad you are for being unable to just be a normal person. And go out with nice people. You can't figure out why you can't just go out and meet people and enjoy yourself. At the same time, you're also feeling like no one would possibly want you, you to hang out if they really knew you, because you're dull and weird anyway. You try your typical strategy and boot up Netflix to distract yourself from these feelings, but frustration with yourself builds, and you realize you have to do something else with your night, anything else to take your mind off of how awful and lonely you feel right now. What do you do? Get over it and go out to the bar where your coworkers are hanging out anyway. See Attic. See if Attic is online. Call Alex. Drink. Go out somewhere alone. Play with your cat. I am doing the same. Doing good. I did just talk to Alex about this, and I don't think. I mean, Attic、um, understands it, kind of, because he, you know, he looked up stuff on Wikipedia and and stuff、um, in the past. So. I mean, he he'll be someone to talk to, but if I'm gonna do something, I might just go out and be with, act like actually actually be physically be there with someone. That's what I'm trying to say. I call Alex. You dial Alex's phone number, figuring that if you could spend some time with her instead of being cooped up in your apartment alone, you might feel less isolated. Her phone rings a handful of times before going to voicemail. You know it's not uncommon for her to be out with friends at this hour. You leave a voicemail, but end up calling again 15 minutes later. Still no response. You imagine Alex out with her friends, much like you would be tonight if you weren't so horribly at horrible at socializing. Your mind wanders, and you start to wonder which who she's with, and if she might meet someone tonight she'd rather be with. Someone who is able to go to parties like this with her instead of sitting at home feeling sorry for themselves. Why didn't she invite you? Have you just said no one? Too many times. How many other Fridays have you unknowingly missed? You begin to think that maybe it would be better if she met someone tonight. She's a wonderful woman, and you feel like a constant joy kill on nights like this. Why can't you just be normal? The next morning, Alex calls you back. She tells you that she left her phone in class, and it's been a boring night in her apartment too. You feel horribly embarrassed about how emotional you got over mistaken assumption the night before. Oh, at least I'm. At least I wasn't depressed. At least I, I was still, still all right. And that, that's good, you know. Alex calls back when, because, because when you don't really have a lot of people to talk to, and 
talking to someone, especially your girlfriend, um, about this. I don't have a girlfriend, uh, but I, I used to. So, so I, I understand this um, all, part also. That if you, that when when someone you care about just kind of just kind of doesn't answer the phone. You, you get all these scenarios in your head. You get all these scenarios of like, what ifs? Uh, maybe she's better off uh, with, uh, especially someone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then, and then you, you try to just think, you know, more rationally. Maybe she left her phone somewhere. Or maybe her phone is on silent and didn't, you know, see it. But then you just kind of go back in, in a loop into thinking what if she has it on silent because she's with someone what if she what if what if she said found someone better and just didn't want to answer the phone and so you kind of just goes back in a loop a lot and they just feel crappier and crappier and sadder and sadder and you just go just feel super sad and you just don't know really what to do like you want to do something but you can't do anything about it kind of feeling So I understand what this what um what this person is feeling in uh, this game. So everyone, I'm out of time right now, but everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my stories and personal experiences. I hope you can share this with someone who has depression and just let them know that someone someone out there um understands you that understands what having depression is like what having these symptoms and having these horrible feelings are like and and how how you how I think about them how how people think about things while they are depressed and um, I wish you that you guys can just share this and just let, let someone know close to you know that that it's not it's not bad to tell someone it's not the end of the world if someone knows about this because everyone needs support everyone needs someone everyone needs a friend to be there for them so that they won't do anything rash thank you again everybody for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video Goodbye.